What is up, YouTube? This is Trainer Connor, and you're going to be watching another Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle video. Thank you guys for coming. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos in the near future. Okay, so I apologize for not uploading for a few weeks here. There have been several factors contributing to my absence, but that's something I cannot explain in the further more detail in this video, so just just note that I've been really busy, and the fact is, I'm back. So, you know, you get back into the YouTube game, you start fresh, and then you go from there. You should expect uploads once a week from this point on. It works out. I mean, yeah, what, what else can I say there? You know, I want to be consistent, and that's what matters. But if you have not seen my last video, it was against Necro Sivo. His side of the video is up as well on his own YouTube channel. So go check it out and let's get into this awesome match. This particular battle that I have for you today is against Juan. And Juan has a YouTube channel as well. I'll put that in the description. He's a really good battler. He's got some good content. We're doing a weird battle today. It's got several things in here that's, I guess you can't call it OU because we have Grand Ninja, but, you know, it's a mixed tier battle using our favorites. I'm actually using a theme team centered around the Hilgo. So we have Caesar going Mega, the Hilgo, an Ultra Beast, being a Rock Poison type. It works out really nicely with uh, Caesar. And we have Electivire, Greninja, which has good synergy there. Um, we have Gehillamise and Minior. My opponent has Gyarados, Tapu Koko, Mega, Alakazam, his own Greninja, which I fear it might be. It might be Battle Bond Greninja, which means if you lock out a Pokemon, he transforms into Ash Greninja. You saw me use one before. It's so strong. Um, he also has Mudsdale and Pangoro. Very interesting teams for today's battle. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And let's get into the match. Alright, here we go. Alright, so this is the match. Again, thank you to Juan for challenging me. It's been really hard trying to get battles in Sun and Moon for some reason. I'm not really sure why. But anyway, so I'm going to start out with Ragged Blade, the Caesar, and I'm going to, or my opponent rather, he's going to start off with Gyarados. Um, not a good matchup here, as you can tell, because of the Enkidimate. Um, but I'm going to go Mega right away, and U-turn. I didn't see Gyarados so speeding me, uh, even if it's a regular Caesar. I have max speed, but this is Adamant. He might be Adamant also. If he was Jolly, he might outspeed me, but now I'm a Mega Caesar, so all that does not matter. I'm going to go to uh, I'm not really sure what Gyarados is going to do, so we'll go into this thing. He pulls off a Thunder Wave on Gehomize, not a good thing there. I figure he might Dragon Dance on the start, but he shows me it here, which is good to know. Uh, I just stay in and go for a Shadow Claw, expecting a switch out into something else. Not too sure there, but we just do it. And he goes with a Fire Blast on the next turn, which I thought was odd. Um... Because, you know, Dragon Dance boosts up your physical attack. And he goes with a special attacking move, Fire Blast. I have the Assault Vest on the home easy, So that kind of shows you how well I'm taking these Fire Blasts. And I just go for a couple of um, Shadow Claws. And we go with the classic... Crap, it's been KO there. If my opponent set up energy hazards, I might have been able to spin those away. That would have been awesome. But there you go. We have our rapid spin KO on camera. That's really cool. Now he goes into Electro. His Tapu Coco, I wasn't sure what he was going to do. So I stay in. 
again and go for the anchor shot. And then he double switches out and goes, or rather, he, he double switches out and goes into Pangoro. Uh, not sure why he did that. He could have just gone into Pangoro on the first turn instead of going to Capu Coco. But that's his fault. He goes with a poison jab and a bullet punch. Uh, I'm really confused by this because he could have just gone with a knockoff or something like that for stab instead of just revealing uh, coverage. That was odd. Uh, I'm not going to complain about it, but that's, that's just what happens. Now I go into my Mega Scizor, go they knock off to knock off something, even if it was just a different Pokemon. I, I, I'll be happy to take care of somebody's item there. We knock off a quick claw on Mudsdale there, and then we go with a U turn, go into Ariel. This particular Greninja is more, I guess, bulky. It has a focus sash. Um, no, I shouldn't say it's bulky, because I used one before I almost got KO'd. It has more support. That's what I'm saying. It has, like, taunt. It's got Scald. It has Ice Beam. And it also has Spikes. And I believe I went with Spikes on this turn. Yes, we do. So, we turn into the ground type. And he does switch out... Wow, I can't talk. He switches out and goes into Greninja, um, which I think he was expecting a water-type move, which I was close to clicking Scald, but I just go for Spikes instead, which, which is good. I go with Scald in case he has a Focus Sash also. I wanted to break it. Plus, I want some residual damage. If I get the burn, that would be awesome. And uh, he, gets a, he gets a critical hit off the Scald, or the Ice Beam, rather, uh, which that, that does cut Greninja's longevity down a little bit. So realizing this, I'm going to go with another layer of Spikes. That way, more of his Pokemon will be taking damage coming in. And that way, now I can bring in something for, for free, basically. And he gets another critical hit, which is funny. I'm going to go into Electrifier. And Electrifier is going to scare Greninja. He goes into Mudsdale, which would have been a great play uh, if I didn't set up those entry hazards. I go with Flamethrower, and the reason I did that, if you guys noticed, Greninja was, what, part ice because he went for the ice beam? So he's an ice type there. So I went for Flamethrower, but it didn't work. And I just stay on Pangoro also, which is awesome because I will also be Pangoro unless he's choice scarfed. In that case, he wasn't scarfed because he changed up moves earlier in the match. So that's a Pangoro down. He brings in Alakazam next. I know it's going to go mega. I make a stupid play going in the hill ago, which was uh, my ultra beast for the match. I realize that it's part poison, which means moves like psychic and uh, psy shock, whatever he has, it's going to be super effective. In addition, he traces my beast boost. Which is scary as heck. If you let that Pokemon get a beast boost, I don't want to imagine that. Anyway, so I am able to take the Psychic despite that misplay going into one. I go with Thunder Wave just to slow him down into a non-tier word. Just that speed is meagered for... Uh, Mega Alakazam. I'm not sure why he went for the Reflect there. It might benefit him later, but not right now, because I'm a special attacker. He goes into Greninja, um, just for the, I guess, typing matchup. I go with Stealth Rock, and again, that's another uh, set of uh, entry hazards for the match. The Hilgo, this particular the Hilgo is more offense or more defensively orientated. I'm sorry guys, I'm a little bit tired. I might 
be a little off, but that's okay. We're going to do it. Now, he dodges by Thunder Wave. That's like the new mechanic in this game where it's like you go with Thunder Wave and for some weird reason it doesn't work. So that's great. Um, he switches out and goes back into Alakazam expecting another Thunder Wave. I should have seen this one coming, but I didn't. So he traces my beast boost yet again, dodges the Thunder Wave. I don't want to get, I don't want to get KO'd by a psychic. Because I am at that range of HP where I can get KO'd by a Psychic. Even though I took one really well earlier, I might not be able to. And what if he gets a critical hit? He might get one, and I don't want to take that risk. So we'll switch out, going to my Mega Caesar. Like I said in the team analysis, I, uh, you know, pairing up Caesar with Mahilago is just proving to be really nice in the long run. He goes into Copy Coco. Um, I believe I go with a U turn, expecting a switch out. Or if he wants to stay in, it's going to get KO'd by a U turn. So, a U turn is actually doing a lot of damage, mainly because I'm adamant nature. I'm going to go into Minior, and this is really bad because I keep forgetting that Minior is part flying type. So he goes with a discharge and I survive with like 3 HP. Go with a, sh a shell smash and that's pretty much good game. Uh, but if I got KO there, that might be a different story. So with Minior setting up a shell smash right here, combine that with a white herb to restore our defenses from being lowered, get our shield down mode activated, we're going to clean up the match. So first up, we're going to go with an Earthquake. Take care of Tapu Coco. Oh man, that, that, that is great stuff right here. I realized that Lecro Sivo used a Minior in, my, in the last video, but I wanted to try it out also because I also trained one. I might as well use it, right? He goes into Greninja, and if he has Water Shuriken, he would have used it right now. But I just go for the acrobatics, and we finish off Greninja. And then finally, he has his Alakazam. So thank you, Juan, with the match. It was really crazy. Lots of twists and turns there, a lot of misplays. But in the end, we had fun. And that's what matters, right? Me living with 3 HP and just wrecking the end of the match here. It's working out really nicely for Minior. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the match, and I should have another match here shortly. If not, then still be patient, right? I'm going to do my very best to be consistent for you all. Anyway, so if you enjoyed the match, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.